hello! It's certainly been a month for things arriving in the mail, but my latest one is from Graby, so I'm going to open it on camera and we'll see what's inside. Let's get into it! Okay, finally got that open. So we have the usual card from Graby, May the Arch Be With You, and then the package itself. A very cute looking box. Graby 12 watercolors, 12 vibrant colors, highly pigmented, high saturation, 100% non-toxic, easy to blend, terrific for travel, metal storage case and palette, perfect for artists of all levels. Okay, it actually includes some other stuff in here. Aside from the watercolors, there's also a travel brush in a round four, a watercolor pad with 12 sheets, a black graphic pen, woodless pencil, pencil sharpener, eraser, and travel pouch. Wow, that's pretty impressive to have in this fairly modest sized box. And of course it's stuck down, so I shall fight with the scissors to get it open, and then we will look inside. And yes, Graby sent this to me for free, but I'm not sponsored, so the opinions are my own. I do really like this cover art too, I think that's super pretty. Let's just pull it out. Now that's so cute. Oh wow, there is all sorts of stuff in here. There is a pencil sharpener, an eraser, which looks a bit like it's got graphite on it already. That would be the fine liner pen. Well, that's really nice. A travel brush. That's an interesting shape. I don't think I've seen one like this before. That is really nice. I like that a lot. And this is such a handy size to have for travel. What else is in here? Now we have a little swatch sheet. There's definitely some graphite on here. I might just get the eraser and rub that off. And then there are some tiny little squares of paper. And in here we have a small paint palette tin. Oh, I was wondering where that was. Inside the paint palette tin is the woodless pencil and a little plastic pot that is stuck down with tape by the looks of things so I shall fight with that in the moment. Let's just take a look at the colors. Lemon yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, rose, ultramarine, royal purple, cerulean blue, sap green, burnt umber, red copper, Payne's gray and white. So a fairly standard palette for 12 colors. I will take a look at that in the moment. I'm just going to sort myself out and see if I could get this woodless pencil out of the case. The tape is peeled off, leaving all of the sticky behind on the thing. That's so annoying. I'm going to have to get some alcohol or something just to wipe that off because that's really sticky and yucky. But in here is a little woodless graphite pencil. It's so cute. What a great idea putting it in a small container like that. So here's everything that came in this little bag. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. It is a genuine travel set in that it has a pencil, a sharpener, an eraser, a brush, and a pen, along with the paints and some paper. I think that is just so cool, and I like that it comes in a nice little bag so you can just stick everything in together and it's easily portable. I like this a lot already. I haven't even tested the colors yet, but just the concept of it is fantastic. They have put a lot of thought into the kinds of things that one might want when traveling. I mean, obviously you might want to have your own size sketchbook or things like that, but I do like when they add some extra paper in and you could do some tiny little travel paintings. Let's see if this eraser works on this card. There's quite a lot of pencil markage on here, so I'm just going to use the eraser. Yeah, that works pretty well, actually. That's better. I've taken off as much pencil as I can. And I was just thinking that the only thing this set does not have is a water pot for this brush because this is not a water brush, which looks like this and you carry the water with you. But I do actually prefer travel brushes like this for some reason. They're just a nicer to use. And so I would recommend putting in some sort of water pot. Do you think I can find a travel one in my studio at the moment? I've just got stuff everywhere and I'm not seeing one, but I've got this little container. This will do for now. There we go, I've cleaned that up with some rubbing alcohol, so that is a lot less sticky now. <laughs> and I guess I'll test out this pencil sharpener while I'm at it, because I think mine has snapped a little bit on the end there of that woodless pencil. So 
oh yeah, that's gonna sharpen. I think I need my bin because I've already dropped it all over the desk. Joy! <laughs> there we go, that's a bit better. It's still not fully sharp because it is going to take quite a while. This is a very long angled sharpener, so it's going to make a very long point, I think. But I just really want to swatch these colours out. I'm getting distracted by so many things on this table because I guess that's the main thing to test out. What are the watercolours going to be like? I also remembered to test the pen, and yes, that is waterproof ink. So, let's start with the first one here, Lemon Yellow. Nice and bright, it reactivated easily with water, as did most of the other colours, like this Cadmium Orange. The only one that was a little bit of a struggle was the Cadmium Red. It initially went on quite weakly, as you can see here, but once I had let the water sit for a while, it did come in a little bit more strongly. It's quite an orange colour, though. I would have liked it to have been just a bit deeper of a red. The rose is really pretty. It's a gorgeous pink. I like that one a lot. And then we have Ultramarine next to it, and beside that, Royal Purple. Really, the Royal Purple should be sitting next to the rose and then the Ultramarine, but I just swatched it out as it was on the card. And yes, that does bother me greatly having them out of order. I like the cerulean blue, a nice bright one for the sky. Sap green was a bit too bright, I would call that more of a may green. It's a pretty colour though, but I really wish there was a dark green next to it. We have burnt umber instead, which is perfectly fine, and then this red copper, which is like a burnt sienna, looks a lot like the cadmium red. Payne's Grey, I think, is a great addition to this. It's a nice bluey black. I really like that. And the white, as suspected, is not very opaque at all, despite my best efforts. I wish that was dark green. Well, now that they're mostly dry, they're actually looking pretty good. I thought they were going to be a little bit more chalky than they actually are once they've dried, so I'm pleased about that. The white isn't exactly very good as I suspected, but it might be okay to mix into others to make slightly more pastel colours. I really wish that purple and ultramarine were the other way around. Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. But aside from that, the palette's okay. Maybe a few too many kind of orangey colours, it feels like, but I'll make it work. So I guess for the real test, we need to do some painting, and I might actually go outside and use this as a travel palette. So yes, I actually went outside. It was a nice day for a change, so I drove down to one of the local parks and I just had a wander around trying to decide where to go. I thought about painting this cockatoo. It was sitting there posing so well. Ah, oh, never mind. I think I might set up here because it's really pretty just looking out over these trees and the garden beds. It's also in the shade under a tree because I forgot to wear sunscreen and the sun she burns. There's also a whole load of ravens making a record. I don't know if you can hear those. And there's traffic noise, there's people everywhere. Ah, the fun of painting outdoors. And the wind's really picked up too, but I'm going to do a painting outside. I'm determined to. I have a whole bunch of people watching me right now. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> Well, this little flask has been excellent. Here we go. I've snapped a quick photo so you can see what I was trying to paint. I narrowed it down to a smaller area because I only have a tiny piece of paper here. And now we are over to lap cam. <laughs> I could have sat on one of the picnic tables, but I decided to go for the park bench instead because sometimes there is no table. And I wanted to share the experience using only this kit and no other equipment like pochard boxes or drawing boards. I don't even have a pochard box. Anyway, those things are so expensive. But here I am sketching the scene in with that woodless pencil and using the eraser to rub out any mistakes that I made along the way. You could probably see that the paper is quite textured, so I only use the pencil to draw on a really basic sketch. And then I'm going to use the pen here to go over everything and turn this into a line and wash painting. Sometimes I might sketch straight with the pen without using a pencil, but I wanted to try and use everything in the kit to see how they'd work together. And if you're starting out, you're probably going to draw with a pencil anyway. I have not done any plein air artwork for a long time, so I was really rusty, and using a pencil just helped me get back into the swing of things, build up my confidence again. Most of my art seems to be in the studio these days, so I'd really like to do more plein air or urban sketching, because it is really fun. The only thing is that you are at the mercy of the elements, and while it was a sunny day, the wind had picked up, so you could probably see my camera shaking a little bit now and then. It was really cold, so I hurried through this as quickly as I could, because of course I didn't bring a jumper or anything like that. <laughs> I was only in a thin t-shirt. But I guess that's one way to not spend too long on a painting. I think all up I was there for about 40 minutes. 
Next to my paint box on the right hand side, that other white box is my portable UniQ filming stand. It holds my phone and it also has a light, but I was just using natural light here. That thing is paid for itself. It is so great for filming on the go. And you can see the sun dappling through the trees there onto my picture. I also had a pot of water on the bench beside me. I really liked the travel brush. It is nice and sturdy. There was no wobbling at all. Sometimes the connections when you screw it together are not good, but this one was excellent. And I found that all of the paints worked pretty well together. I was able to make a lighter pink with the white, but that was about the only time I used it. I also mixed up some slightly darker greens with the sap green, ultramarine, and a bit of brown as well to tone it down and make it more of a natural looking green color. So the mixing capabilities of the set are actually pretty good and I like that purple colour too, that was perfect for those lavender looking flowers in the garden bed. The brownie red colour is a bit too orange, I would have liked that to have been more earthy. The paper was alright, it's a 300 GSM cellulose I think, and I'm not really a big fan of cellulose paper, but when it's small like this there's no real issue. I think this would be about an A6 size pad. And it held the watercolour well without buckling, so that's always a good thing. I guess I'd classify the paints as a nice level student grade. They did start to take on a gouache-like consistency once the pans had been soaking in water for a while, and it kind of lifted off really easily in chunks, so I will show that near the end of the video. But I'll just finish up with this painting. I did go a little bit from imagination just to add in a bit more blue than was actually visible from what I was looking at, but I just wanted to have some nice blue sky. I added in some darker shadows just to try and create some more value tones to the painting. Most of the colours are pretty much in the mid-tone range, but that Payne's Grey is nice and dark, and that did pretty well mixing in with other colours just to deepen them a bit, and I was able to get some kind of shadow going on. It really is just a little sketch. I was very cold, there was lots of wind, there were people constantly walking by, and I even had one lovely lady come up and chat to me for a while, asking to see what I was doing. Oh gosh, that's always so difficult for me, I'm such an introvert, and I always feel really self-conscious making art in public. But it was a fun experience, and I did enjoy being outside. I'm glad I did it. Well, it's not exactly my most amazing work of art, but it is really cold out here, and I am freezing, so I'm going to go back to the studio now. At least I got a little painting done outside. Oh, it's so much warmer in the car. I'm slowly thawing out. <laughs> and I'm back in the studio after my little outing. That was completely unplanned. Totally spur of the moment. I just decided to go out and do something outside since it is a travel set. I'm really glad I did though. It was fun getting out and painting outside and I really hope I can do more of this. Today I just grabbed this lot and chucked it into my handbag and went. So that was okay. So I think I'm going to call it done today for artworks. I feel pretty satisfied that I know how the paints and everything have behaved so I'll just finish up with a few conclusions so what I like about this set I think this is a really cute drawstring bag and this went into my handbag very easily because inside it also has the pad of paper that came with it and theoretically this will also fit it's a little water brush I managed to shove that in too. <laughs> the only thing the set does not come with is some kind of container for water so I did have to carry an extra one. The swatch card I really like. It's always great to have one of those in the set and you don't have to make your own one. The pen was quite nice and I have no issues with that. It's also waterproof so that is always great. I think my favorite thing is this brush. It's really fantastic. It's quite solid and it's nicely built so that when it goes together it doesn't wobble at all. It's really solid and I think that is excellent quality. The brush itself holds quite a lot of water and no issues whatsoever with that. This little container does not screw together I've noticed but it does just keep the pencil inside and protect it a little bit. I think it's a great idea having this little woodless pencil. You could probably also fit in one of those little Ikea pencils or something like that so there are a few different solutions for carrying a pencil and it's great that it fits inside the paint tin. As for the paints themselves they're okay they're not the most amazing things in the world but they worked well enough this white I would ditch and replace it with a dark green because I always use dark greens when 
going outside. That would just be the one thing I would change. I think the other colors are quite nice though and they work well as a palette. Maybe a dark brown but I was able to mix a dark brown with the Payne's Grey and the Burnt Umber so not too fussed about that. And you can of course take the half pans out and put in your own ones so these are always versatile for chopping and changing. Usually if you don't want to keep the pencil in there you can put in another row of half pans and stick them down if you wanted to add more colors. The only thing is that the paint does turn into a gouache like consistency when the water has been sitting on it for a while. I'm not sure if you could see that if I've just got my water brush here with some water in it. What it does is it kind of lifts it in chunks if, if you could see that there and yeah it's takes a little bit of mixing so it is actually better to lift some off and mix it onto the side of the pan so that you can get a much smoother watercolor finish. It's just something which happens with paints that maybe aren't professional grade, they're more in the student grade kind of level. These are pretty decent paints, you know they'll work in a pinch and of course you can add your own colors if these ones aren't working for you. So overall as a set I think it's really great. I like that almost everything you need is included except for the water pot and the fact that you could give this as a gift to someone and they can go out and do some painting immediately along with having a pencil, eraser, a pen and a nice brush. I just think that is really excellent. I would be very happy if someone gave this to me as a gift. In fact Graby kind of did so I am really happy <laughs> and I will definitely use this. I think it's just great to chuck it in my handbag and it can be super portable. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I've included links in the description below if you want to check the set out for yourself. I think I've got a 15% off coupon code there as well. So let me know in the comments what you think. Is it a set that you'd enjoy using? Because I'm always curious to hear what you might add in a little travel set. And if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye! Bye.